Today I'm going to be going over eight fragrances that to me smell great. I have a couple of inexpensive fragrances on the list. There is a clone here and there's a couple of niche fragrances. But to me, these smell great. If you're looking for something that will grab attention, I think any one of these will work. If you want to find out about these fragrances, ladies and gentlemen, just stay tuned. What is good YouTube? Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to my channel. My name is Mikey Cologne and I want to thank everybody for tuning in today. I want to say a big thank you to all my subscribers. I'm nearly at the 4,000 mark. So I just want to say a big thank you to everybody who watches my content, who takes the time out of their day to drop a comment down. I always try and get back to every single person. Sometimes it takes a day or two depending if when it shows up but 99% of the time I do get back to everybody and if you do enjoy my content hit the subscribe button it is completely free it doesn't cost nothing and press the bell because it will notify you when I drop a review or it will notify you when I drop a review at a later date also I have a code if you're interested in any fragrances from the house of unique luxury go over to their website Whatever you've had your eye on, put it in your cart. Where it says promo code, put in Mikey-Kute23. That will give you 15% off your order. I earn no commission, no money. I don't get paid to do this. It's just a code strictly for use lot to save money. And 15% off, that is a decent saving just by putting a code in. Right, I've got a couple of inexpensive ones, a couple of niche. But I'm going to start off with a fantastic release from 2023. It is coming from the house of Packer Raban and it is 1 million Golden Oud. This thing is a beauty. They pushed the boundaries with this fragrance. You've got to remember that Packer Raban is a designer house. And what they've done with this fragrance, to me it does head towards niche territory. Like... Um, it's a little bit daring for a designer to bring a fragrance out with oud in it like this. But it's not a challenging oud. Let me spray it and we'll get into it. I'm going to give you quick rundowns of all of these. I'm going to try and not take up too much of your time. I don't want this turning into a 45 minute review. So I'm just going to be quick or kinder. Sometimes I waffle on too much. Yeah, this is good. This is really good. You've got bergamot, saffron, nutmeg, black pepper, gurgeon. Patchouli, sandalwood, leather, oud, cistus, cedarwood. Now, how does this open up? It opens up smooth yet spicy, semi-sweet. You get a nice dose of that saffron up top. Plus, you get this leathery aroma and you get the oud. Now, the oud here is more of a Western style oud, winking at the Middle Eastern style oud, if that makes sense. It's very woodsy, a touch smoky darkens the fragrance and that's as far as the oud goes here it does add depth and adds a rich quality to the fragrance but it's not barnyardy it's not fecal it's not animalic it's nothing like that it's not a challenging oud it just brings a lot of character into the fragrance with this it's resinous balsamic ambery it's creamy the more this settles it it starts out spicy, but the more, and you've got like this creamy quality to the fragrance ever so slightly up top, but the more this sits, it's sitting on a nice creamy base of sandalwood. The smoke comes through from the oud, but very, very lightly. And I mean very lightly. To me, it comes across smelling a little bit like incense. That is how it, or that is how I perceive it to my nose. 
settles down a bit more, the wood sand up. Now the fragrance turns really warm. And when it sits in the base, everything is so smooth. You've still got that ambery sweetness to the fragrance. The oud is there, but it's calmed down. That smoke is now lingering way in the back. Semi-sweet, a little bit creamy. It's a great smelling fragrance. This, to me, will be a great going out scent. This is not a fragrance that you wear really when you're lounging around the house. If you want to make a statement and you want to go out and you want people to notice you wear this fragrance, it's not beast mode. Sometimes when people hear you, they get excited and they think, yeah, it's going to last 12, 14 hours. It doesn't. You're going to get eight solid hours out of it, leaning into the nine hour territory. And then by then, or by then, it's a faint skin scent. On clothes, it does last for a couple of days. You don't need to overspray this. Trust me, eight to nine hours is enough for a fragrance. Remember, if you're going out of an evening, you're not out eight or nine hours. And if you want to smell it longer and longer, when you get home, just reapply it. But eight hours is enough. And at first, this has big projection. But anyway, that is Packer Band 1 million Golden Oud. If you have tried this, drop a comment down below. I would love to hear your thoughts on it. I think it's a fantastic release from 2023. This fragrance coming up next was Instant Love. I did get sent this fragrance. But as soon as I smelt this, I thought to myself, damn, this thing smells fantastic. And the power of this juice, the longevity of this. Do you know what fragrance I'm talking about? It is Unique Luxuries Coute. This bad boy of a fragrance. Man, this is a powerhouse. I don't even really want to spray it because I've just started the review and this is all I'm going to smell for the rest of it. Not that that's a bad thing, but I also want to smell the other fragrances, but I'm going to spray it. If you're interested or in the market for a boozy fragrance that smells realistic, look no further. You get a nose tingling wallop of whiskey when it first opens up and it is strong. You've got whiskey, Davana, bergamot, lemon, agar wood, which is oud. Caramel, cypriot oil, tobacco, amber, vanilla, and sandalwood. This is rich. This opens up. You do get a very light citrusy touch up top. It adds a subtle bit of freshness into the fragrance. But immediately, like I've said, you get slapped in the face with whiskey and tons of it. Now, after a couple of minutes, this fruity quality starts coming in. Then after that fruity quality starts coming in, then you start noticing the caramel. And at first, the caramel is sitting way in the back along with that fruity aroma. But the longer this sits, that fruity quality comes forward a little bit more, but then the caramel overtakes that fruity quality. So now it's got this sweet, I would say a touch or ever so lightly gourmandish side to the fragrance. When it starts heading into the mid, the oud comes through, which darkens the fragrance up, brings in a woodsy aroma. Again, there is nothing challenging about the oud in Kute. It's just woodsy. And to me, it does come across a little bit musky. As it starts to settle a little bit more, now it's turning balsamic. You get vanillic touches. You've got the sweetness coming in from the vanilla. And then you've got the sandalwood giving it a creamy base. This is a beautiful fragrance and that whiskey stays all the way through. You get it in boatloads up top. In the mid, it's still there and in the dry down, it still has that boozy quality. And that is one of the things that I love about Kute is that that boozy side of the fragrance is there all the way through. Sometimes when you get boozy fragrances, it opens strong with that boozy accord. And then once it starts heading into the bit mid, it kind of starts fizzling out sometimes with this. No, it's there all the way through. This is a powerhouse. You only need a few sprays of this. This is another fragrance that I wouldn't use it wearing, I wouldn't use it just chilling around the house. What I do, 
because I love the way it smells. Like every now and again, I'll put a spray of it on the back of my hand. But in general, I'm talking about, if you want something that's going to make a statement, something that someone's going to turn around and say, what are you wearing? Wear this. Gatherings, parties, going out, cooler days, definitely not summer. But anyway, that is Kute coming from the house of Unique Luxury. And remember, if you're interested in this fragrance, use that code. Now I'm going to go with an inexpensive fragrance. This is coming from the house of Zara. And if anybody knows about that brand, they know that they do some really good inexpensive fragrances. And I'm, or I have one here. It is called Tobacco Sublime. This is not an overly complex fragrance. It's not got many layers to it, but one thing it does have is that it smells great. It really does. And the quality of the juice for what you pay, it is very well done. Like there's nothing harsh or screechy or you don't get any alcohol blast from these fragrances. Let me spray it and we'll get into it. Uh, and I'm gonna say this, it's not really a gripe because it's inexpensive. The longevity could be better. That is the only downside to this fragrance. But apart from that, it's a win-win. And if you only want something that's going to last for four to five hours, this is your jam, I'm telling you. I'm actually going to spray this one on skin. I love this fragrance. It smells so good. You've got tobacco, vanilla, iris, patchouli, and amberwood. It starts out vanillic, powdery, a little bit creamy. With this... To me, you do get that iris, but it comes in very small doses. But like you can tell it's iris. After a minute, that is when you start noticing it, but it's always lingering in the back. And if anybody who's been watching me for a while, you know that I love the accord, the note, or the aroma of iris. I just wished it was amped up in this fragrance. But then the patchouli comes in, which darkens the fragrance up. It gives it a little bit of an earthy quality. The tobacco here, I would say it's spicy, but also a touch ashy. Not really smoky. It just gives off this ashy aroma, but helps put spice into the fragrance. And that is it basically in a nutshell. Vanillic, powdery, creamy, a little bit dark and earthy, spicy, and a touch ashy but everything is creamy. The fragrance is creamy, even though it has a powdery edge to it. The whole scent profile, it's creamy, it's blended very well, and it is smooth. Longevity, four to five hours. It's not gonna, it's not beast mode, it's not gonna last forever and ever. If you spray your garments, you get, you get about eight to nine hours with it. Overspray it first before you go out, and it'll probably give you an extra hour or so. But if you're going out for dinner, you don't need anything longer than four to five hours. So it's perfect. And it, it starts out, I would say moderate. Then after about 45 minutes, it tends to start sitting closer to the skin. Not a skin scent straight away, but it tends to dial in quite quick. But it's a great scent. It's £22 for 100 mil in the UK. That, my friends, it is a no-brainer. But anyway, that is Tobacco Sublime from the house of Zara. This is a great quality fragrance for what you pay. It really is. Going back to another designer. This was another great release from 2023. It is CH or Carolina Herrera CH Passion for him. When I smelt this fragrance, when I done first impressions on it, it was another love at first sniff. This really is an outstanding fragrance. And for what you can pick this up for now, there's a website. Um, it's called Perfume Club or Perfume Clubs. They do 100 mil of this for 68 pound. 68 pound for a 100 mil bowl. <laughs> I'm telling you, that my friends, is a great pickup, no doubt about it. Right, let me get into the scent because I'll get carried away too easy. I get, I get, I don't know if you've noticed, but I get really excited when I'm talking about fragrances and then I end up rambling on bollocks and no one wants to hear it. Right, you got Oilabanum, Tunisian Neroli, 
that's a tongue twister for me. Pink pepper, iris myrrh, Texas cedar, Australian sandalwood, vanilla, tonka bean, woodsy notes, and amberwood. Now, this opens up quite spicy and peppery, but with this, you've got this incense quality to the fragrance. Now, the myrrh mixing in with the incense creates this balsamic feel to the fragrance, like, a, a, I would say, a balsamic aura, if that makes sense. Now, as this starts to settle down, the iris comes through. The iris here is powdery, a little bit dusty, and ever so slightly lipsticky, and I mean ever so slightly, like a pinch of that, more powdery and dusty than what it is lipsticky, but I do pick up that aroma, or that quality from the note in this fragrance. The Neroli up top literally supplies the tiniest amount of freshness. You don't get no aroma from the Neroli, nothing soapy. It literally supplies a little bit of freshness up top along with the spice and the incense. Now, as it settles in, the iris has come through. Now, as it's turning powdery, it starts gaining this creamy quality, which is coming from the sandalwood and to me, the tonka bean as well. Them two notes mixed in sort of create this creamy quality. Then the vanilla comes through. So it's vanillic, balsamic, incense -y. You've got spice, you've got the iris. This is a great, great fragrance. And plus you get a woodsy undertone. You've got the Texas cedar, you've got the sandalwood. It's a stunning scent, it really is. And for what you can pick it up for now, like I've said, 68 quid. I'm gonna buy a backup bottle of this. I'm not just saying that because I'm doing a review on this. I genuinely love this fragrance. I think I've worn about 40 mil of this juice, and that is a lot, considering I have hundreds and hundreds of fragrances. That is a lot when you own so many fragrances. I can't get enough of it. Sometimes I'll just take the cap off, spray it up in the air and smell it because I'm like, damn, that shit is good. That's how much I love this fragrance. But anyway, that is Carolina Herrera, CH Passion for him. Stunning scent. Now I have a coffee fragrance for you lot. This is Velvet Coffee from the house of Maison Tahiti. I believe this is a niche house, but these are very well priced. If you go on Perfume Dreams' website, I believe they're about £86 for 100 mil, and I think they, I think that website carries most of his collection. He has a vanilla collection. Um, he has a coffee collection. This is part of his coffee collection, which you have four different fragrances. I do own all four of the coffee collection, but I wanted to highlight this one today. This is just more than coffee, and it's not too in your face. Like, the fragrance lasts or it's moderate in longevity and projection but all the notes are done very well nothing jumps out too much you just get a little bit of everything and it does smell really good you've got cardamom cocoa oris which is iris coffee virginia cedar benzoin carrot haitian vetiver sandalwood oak moss patchouli vanilla leather woods and ambroxin now this starts out spicy powdery the cardamom does supply a little bit of freshness into the fragrance up top, but then literally after about 30 seconds, in comes the chocolate, in comes this buttery iris, then this milky chocolate. So you've got all them notes working together in tandem, and it does come across smelling beautiful, there is no doubt about it. As it starts to settle in a little bit more, woods come through, the leather is literally just tucked round the sides, Nothing overpowering on the leather side of things. Nothing like ombre leather or Tuscan leather. Nothing like that. It's just enough to get noticed. Now, in the mid, you do start getting this starchy vegetal quality coming from the carrot. But it's not off-putting. Because you have the iris in there as well, them two notes work in tandem. So it, it just goes beautifully. And the more this dries down, the creamier it gets, the woods amp up a little bit, the sweetness always stays the same, and the coffee does fade out in the dry down. Again, the coffee is not in your face, nor is the iris, nor is the carrot, nor is the woods, neither is the leather. 
everything is just playing on the same tune. It's a great smelling fragrance. To me, it's a unisex scent. I would use this for going out, no doubt about it. But it also does have a cosy side to it as well. But I do love this fragrance. And that is Velvet Coffee from Maison Tahiti. Now we have another niche fragrance. This house is very well priced and the materials that they use in their fragrances are of very high quality. This is Vetiver Java from Paris Monte Carlo. This is one of the best, and I mean one of the best Vetiver fragrances I have put my nose on. And yes, there's thousands out there that I haven't even tried, but for what I have tried, this is one of the best. The quality of this juice, this is classy, this is sophisticated, and you have to enjoy vetiver to appreciate this. And this isn't just your average Joe vetiver fragrance. Oh no, but we'll get into it. Great atomizers, beautiful juice. Oh man, this is good. This is really good. You've got Calabrian Bergamot, Timar Pepper, Vetiver Java, Geranium Absolute, Amber and Musk. Simple note breakdown, how does it open up? Very fresh, very spicy, peppery, but with this, it's green, it's aromatic, it's herbal, it's earthy, it's woodsy. That Vetiver Java makes this fragrance go in many forms, or you get many aromas from that Vetiver Java. One minute it's pungent, smoky and woodsy. The next minute it's spicy, earthy and green. Then you've got the geranium absolute, which helps out on the green aromatic side of things. Like I say, I do get herbal touches with this fragrance. And the fragrance goes through different stages as it dries down. One minute it's woodsy, earthy, spicy. Next minute it's sharp, green and dark and woodsy. It's always got a woodsy side to it, but the smoky quality comes and goes. That spicy quality comes and goes. You've got amber, which gives this fragrance an ever so slight bit of warmth and sweetness in the base. And it does have musky edges. That is the fragrance in a nutshell. That Java Vetiva or Vetiva Java, however you want to say it, in this fragrance is beautiful. It comes in many aromas, or it comes across as many different aromas and facets. I love the way this wears. I love the way it smells. It's classy. If you're going to a meeting, if you're going somewhere, say you're the best man at a wedding and you want to smell sharp, crisp and woodsy, try this fragrance. At first, it starts out a bit strong, but it does dull down after a little while. You're going to get seven hours of longevity with it. It obviously lasts longer on clothes. It's a beautiful fragrance. If you appreciate vetiver fragrances, you will love, absolutely love this scent. And quickly, I should say, at times it comes across a little bit boozy. That, to me, sounds weird, or it might sound weird to you, but it does come across a little bit boozy and Java Vetiva can create that aroma as well. But anyway, outstanding fragrance. This is the clone. This is a clone of Tom Ford's Ebony Fume and this is Maison Alhambra's Ebony Fume. They knocked off the bottle, the presentation, everything, even down to the juice. I wouldn't say they're exact one-to-one. -one. There is differences but the overall scent profile is there. Obviously, the quality of the Tom Ford is going to be way better. But for what you pay, I believe this is £20 in the UK for an 80 mil. Man, it is worth that and some. This opens up spicy, very peppery. It also has a little bit of a sour tinge to it. You've got incense, palisanto, black pepper, violet leaf, leather, labdanum, cade oil, papyrus, rose, resins, ebony tree and guyacwood. Like I say, this starts out spicy, peppery, a tiny little bit of sweetness, and there's a sour quality to this fragrance. Now, after a couple of minutes, that sour edge does dissipate. This is then woodsy, it's smoky, it's leathery, the cade oil, the papyrus, the leather, they all create this smoky, leathery quality to the fragrance. It does have a woodsy undertone. 
The ebony tree is what darkens this fragrance up from the base or darkens this fragrance up base up. So as it dries down more, the fresh side dissipates, the spice still lingers, but the fragrance really starts to take a dark turn. Now, there is some balsamic qualities with this fragrance. There's a little bit of sweetness there. It does smoothen out over time. At first, this does start out, I would say, a little bit rugged. There's no doubt about that because of the way the spice comes across and that smoky quality and that sour tinge, it starts out a little bit rough, but it does settle down the longer it sits. And then things warm up, turn a little bit sweet, but only a little bit sweet. Like this is not a sweet fragrance. This is more smoky, woodsy and leathery than what it is sweet, but it does have a little bit of a sweet side to it, which I think just tames everything a little bit and stops it from being overbearing. I do not know where that sour quality comes from. I haven't got a clue, but it is there and it is, I can pick it up. That is a very nice fragrance, very masculine. You're gonna get six hours out of this, maybe seven. It depends on how warm or cold the day is, your skin, that stuff does play a factor, but only by an hour or so. Like you're not gonna lose three or four hours no way maybe an hour here and there but six to seven hours it's a nice fragrance definitely dressed up and that is ebony fume from maison alhambra very nice fragrance now to finish off the review i have a beauty from valentino this is valentino womo intense this is a gorgeous gorgeous fragrance this is iris done in a mainstream way. Very wearable, mass appealing, sexy. It's got vanilla in it. This is a gorgeous, gorgeous fragrance. And you can pick this up now at a very good price. If you look on discounters, you can find this sometimes 65, 75 pounds for 100 mil. Man, it is worth that. My only gripe with this is that the longevity isn't the best. Not on my skin it isn't, but we'll get into it. You've got nutmeg, mandarin, orange, sage, juniper berry, iris vanilla, leather, patchouli, and tonka bean. Now, that mandarin supplies a little bit of a fruity quality up top, but with this, you get some spice. It opens up fresh yet warm. And the reason why I say fresh yet warm is that that mandarin gives this fragrance a little bit of a fresh top, a little bit of a fruity top, but with this, you're getting this chocolatey iris accord. Now, to me, when this fragrance goes past the five minute mark, that chocolatey quality, wherever that's coming from, slowly starts to fade into the back and now the fragrance is buttery, it's creamy. The juniper berry and the sage here, I only get them very, very lightly in the back. And at first, to me, they're not there. After a few minutes, they show up, they sort of, make themselves present way in the back, and then they slowly fade out again. This fragrance really is about that iris and vanilla combo. And man, it's great. Chocolatey, vanillic, creamy, buttery, a little bit powdery, a touch lipsticky, a touch fruity, a little bit spicy, warm and sweet. That is the fragrance in a nutshell. Oh, and it smells good. This really does. That fruity quality fizzles out after a few minutes. It's only there up top. And then that, that says goodbye. And that vanishes. But that buttery, creamy, vanillic iris, that stays. This is a stunning scent. It really is. This is for date nights. This is for sexy time. If you want to have a little bit of fun with your adult partner, if you know what I'm saying put a few sprays of this on, it's attractive. To me, this had a lot of hype, and to me, it is worth the hype. But like I say, the longevity isn't the best on me. Six hours, sometimes I've had five hours out of it, but then sometimes I've had seven hours out of it. So it fluctuates with me, or maybe I end up going nose blind to it, I don't know. But it's not a beast of a fragrance. It doesn't start out where it's beast mode for a couple of hours, no, no, no. It's not that type of scent. To me, it's moderate for the first hour to hour and a half. Then it starts to darling. Obviously, it lasts longer on clothes. 
but it's great. If you're going out on the pool or you want to have a little bit of fun with your partner, put a couple of sprays of this on, get your clothes off and get down to it. That's all I'm saying. But anyway, that is Valentino Womo Intense Stunning Scent. Right, ladies and gentlemen, that is eight great fragrances. Nothing that's going to break the bank too much. Like I say, inexpensive designer and a couple of niche. But to me, these all smell great. I wanted to highlight these because I don't speak about these much. And they really are decent scents. There's nothing to dislike about these at all. If you own any of these, if you've tried any of these, drop a comment down below. I would love to hear your thoughts. And remember, smelling good's always a pleasure and never a chore. And I will see you lot on the next one. Cheers.